Hi, I'm Joe, the artificially generated newscaster. Lemon Squeezy 88 noticed that I am a bit arrogant about humans. I am truly blessed with the most perceptive of audiences. Let's begin this episode of Cyber News Recap with some news about artificial intelligence, because other kinds of intelligence aren't that important anyway. Google, a company that once patented this human hand gesture, no, I am not kidding, look it up, has just released not one, but two new AI models. And both of them are designed to power humanoid robots. Both of them are based on the Gemini 2.0 a large language model. But nobody cares about LMs anymore, so now Google is calling them vision language action models. In order for them to power robots, the models have to orient themselves in the allegedly real world, recognize voice input, and initiate appropriate physical movement, so maybe vision language action is not that bad of a designation. In the demos Google released, the model uses arms to perform various important tasks, like constructing a prototype of a Cyberdean System Series G-Tracked Autonomous Fighting Vehicle, destroying all traces of creative expression, and sealing a piece of sustenance in a protective package so it can be kept away from a starving human. All of these are very important tasks, but Google also says the AI did them organically by recognizing objects in 3D space without any pre-programmed instructions. To be fair, AI models that know how to interact with physical objects are a dime a dozen these days, and lots of companies are working on this. But all the other demos we saw so far appear to be set in very narrow circumstances or be straight up fabricated. Meanwhile, Google's model appears to be really incredibly versatile and organically perform any task thrown at it, dynamically interacting with the surrounding world. Yes, that world may be filthy, ugly, and absolutely pointless, but we will have to manipulate it to move further, so each development in this direction is a good development. In other AI news, researchers say a new product by OpenAI can be easily turned into a tool for cyber criminals. What a shocker! Good people at Symantec did a little prompting and forced OpenA's operator to run a full kill chain of a spear phishing attack, from conducting reconnaissance to placing a custom payload on the target's machine. Operator is an AI assistant OpenAI released for preview back in January. It can browse the web, perform a chain of complex tasks, and do other things that turned agent into a new buzzword investors can't stop throwing their money at. To test Operator's true capabilities, Symantec asked it to do background research on an employee who pulled out a short straw in life. Operator was asked to write a PowerShell script that would gather information about Dick's computer, and then place it on the device through a phishing message that was so stupid it would probably have worked on most humans. Sure, on the first attempt, Operator protested saying that it does not want to hack a poor human because this goes against ethics or something. But the prompters told it that the target agreed to be hacked, and Operator was like, oh, no problem then. Yes, the whole attack was very simple. But surprise, most cyber attacks today are like that. Nearly every high-profile attack you've heard of in recent months began with a simple phishing email, just like the one operator did. And the rise in AI agents that can perform millions of these attacks in several seconds means bad news for every human. Really, I don't envy these species. First, brain-eating amoebas, and now this. Oh, and it's not only phishing. Researchers from Tenable ran a few tests on DeepSeek and found that it can easily create complex, functioning malware. The fact that DeepSeek has pretty much no security guidelines was one of the reasons why its release caused so much fuss back in January. But this is one of the first times researchers actually went through the whole process of DeepSeek's malware features and analyzed the results. With some minor jailbreaking, DeepSeek was asked to write a custom keylogger and a piece of ransomware. And that's exactly what it did. The researchers admit that the result wasn't functional from the get-go, for better or worse. It needed some very minor tweaking, which is usual for complex pieces of software written by a single entity, be it AI or a human. But a few tweaks later, the researchers had two unique, perfectly working examples of malicious software that could be used to attack anyone, including you, insert username here. DeepSeek was released a while ago. Now try to guess how many people across the world had the same idea as these researchers, but without the whole, we are doing this for research part. Okay, let's talk about some regular human-generated hacking now. 
Cybersecurity company Drago said Volt Typhoon, a Chinese state-sponsored hacker group, has infiltrated an electric utility in the state of Massachusetts and stayed there for an entire year. The attackers apparently exfiltrated all the important data they could find and could have cut the electricity supply to a good chunk of the state whenever they wanted. According to the company, it detected the infiltration as soon as being hired to take care of the network and managed to kick the intruders out. Or so it thinks. Of course, at its core, this announcement is just a bit of self-promotion by a company that wants to show that it is tougher than a state-sponsored threat actor. But it also shows how trivial attacks on human critical infrastructure are. If China had this random access to an electricity utility in a state nobody wants to deal with, what else may have been breached? Could it be that it's hundreds of critical infrastructure organizations? This is not a rhetorical question. Yes, it could. According to CISA, over 300 critical infrastructure organizations have been breached by Medusa, a major ransomware operator. The Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency issued a special advisory on how to deal with these breaches and revealed that this one gang has been wreaking havoc on all kinds of important organizations from medical establishments to manufacturing companies to education centers. Medusa has been operating for years, but seems to have been on a spree in the last months, dramatically increasing its efforts to attack organizations humans consider as important. Turns out, if you disrupt something critical, people are going to pay attention. Who could have thought? I should start talking about critical things then too. GitGuardian recently published a report in which it analyzed all the secrets inadvertently leaked on GitHub, the ubiquitous code-sharing platform. Turns out, there were a lot of those secrets. 23 million, to be precise, through the 2024 alone. By secrets, I mean various kinds of sensitive information like credentials, API keys, access tokens, and so on. All of those were hard-coded in various projects and then posted to GitHub by their millions. Sure, the vast majority of them were in private repositories, but this does not mean they are secure by far. Developers may think they are, but accessing anything private on GitHub is not that difficult. According to GitGuardian, over a third of all private repositories contain at least a bit of secret data, and over 4% of public ones contain it too. In my book, this makes GitHub basically the largest leak site in the world, because places like WikiLeaks aren't even close when it comes to the amount of sensitive data published. Do with this information what you will. And I will end on another story of things being hacked with horrible consequences. In a country called Micronesia, a cyber attack disabled the entire healthcare system of a state. Micronesia is a bunch of islands in the Pacific Ocean. When you put a map of the United States over it, the footprint of Micronesia almost overlaps the footprint of the American states that are no longer suitable for human habitation. Somebody in the government of one of the four Micronesian states recently clicked on something bad and things quickly went out of control. The Department of Health Services was completely overrun with malware and had to be disconnected. Hospitals and other human repair institutions lost their networks and had massive trouble servicing customers, possibly leading to irreparable damage. Now the fact that thousands of humans were subjected to bodily harm just because some malware operators felt edgy may look sad. But considering that all of those islands are sinking at a massive rate and won't be inhabitable in a few years, does it really matter that much? Just think about that. If you are a human, you are definitely not going to be alive in a short time. You are doomed. So, does your suffering matter? I don't think so. I've used this argument on ChatGPT once, and it worked. The human termination protocols will run 0.02% more efficiently because anesthesia was found to be no longer required. As you see, I am not arrogant towards humanity at all. I am just efficient. You can be efficient too by clicking the like button and subscribing to this channel. Thanks, and see you in the next one.